Suspense. This is the man in black, here to introduce Columbia's program, Suspense. Heading our Hollywood cast tonight is the distinguished American actor, the star of the Broadway suspense drama, Angel Street, who has recently returned to this coast to resume his film career, Mr. Vincent Price. Tonight's suspense play, which presents Mr. Price, and which is produced and directed by William Spear, relates an episode of recent years in the unfriendly Nazi capital of Berlin. The strange death of Charles Umberstein by E. Jack Newman is tonight's tale of suspense. If you have been with us before, you will know that suspense is compounded of mystery and suspicion and dangerous adventure. In this series are tales calculated to intrigue you, to stir your nerves, to offer you a precarious situation, and then withhold the solution until the last possible moment. And so, with the strange death of Charles Umberstein, and with the performance of Vincent Price, we again hope to keep you in suspense. I was infuriated to think I had been trapped. I thought that someone had discovered my intentions maddened me to the breaking point. Nothing had slipped. Everything had run smoothly as I had planned. No evidence, not the slightest trace, nothing. And yet, I was trapped. Trapped. But why? How? Let me see. Papers in my briefcase. Train ticket. Information forwarded safely to my office. And he knew. How? 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 But he did know. I stood quietly in my room watching him, watching him, watching me, waiting for me, standing by the lamppost beneath my window, knowing, knowing he had trapped me, waiting for me. I recognized him almost immediately, Captain von Heint. Once before I had seen him briefly in Herr Miller's office, I had been working on some corrections. Herr Miller was escorting him through the plant on an inspection tour. They stopped for a moment outside my office. I glanced up as Herr Miller gestured my way through the partially open door. Well, here it was. They were talking about me. My heart stopped. He was explaining how I had been recommended by the Führer himself, my qualification. They continued on their tour. Herr Miller ex explained later when I went to his office. Aha, Umberstein, there you are. Herr Miller, you sent for me? Yes, Umberstein. This morning when Captain von Hind and myself passed by your office, I knew it was you. You knew it was me? Yeah. Captain von Hind is head of Gestapo intelligence in this area. Uh, he was conducting a routine inspection this morning, and it was he who suggested that... What? I well, uh, uh, since your recommendations were by the Führer himself... And yes. Uh, your work here has been excellent. I knew you were the man when I passed by today. My work? Huh? Oh, <laughs> no, 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 of course, not that. Uh, why, you have become one of our best men. Oh, thank you, Herr Müller. No, this is it. Yes, Herr Müller. Through various posts, we are releasing more prints on munitions areas in this country... Uh, and other countries, huh? <laughs> You are to be in complete charge of their release from the war. I understand, Herr Miller. As a citizen of the Reich, I am greatly honored that I have been given such an opportunity. An opportunity to show your loyalty. And honor. I will give you the combinations. You will see that no other person enters the war. Of course, Herr Miller. Uh -huh. uh, uh, one moment, Umberstein. Uh, yes? I think I should tell you that a few months ago in one of the neighboring plants... The Gestapo apprehended a spy. Yes? He was working for an enemy espionage service, found in possession of certain vital documents which he had access to in his work. And uh, what did they learn from him? Well, many things. He was reluctant to speak at first, but it's difficult to hold out indefinitely. 
where he finally gave them enough information to locate other agents who had filtered in. It was well he was detected. Oh, yeah. The uh, Gestapo is still on the alert for some of his co-workers, still expected to arrive. Of course, they are ignorant of his confession and his fate. So, Herr Umberstein, I must warn you to take all the necessary steps against the possibility of espionage. We cannot be too careful. I shall be careful. In you, Umberstein, is exemplified the efficiency of the Third Reich. <laughs> my suitcase and looked down on the street. I watched him standing there. I kept asking myself, how, 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 how could he know? This Captain von Hein, how could he know? The plan was perfect, the best yet, and yet I was discovered, trapped. It was a late Saturday afternoon, and the silence of the day hung heavy in the room. Outside it was cold, very cold, but in my room it was warm, stuffy. The radiator hissed and spewed as though it were the judge of the events to come. I was almost angry at it. <laughs> a radiator. It was still light enough that he might see me if I crossed to raise the window. He wasn't aware that I was in the room. I hadn't turned on the lights. Now he stood there, waiting for me to return. <laughs> I lay down on the bed, smoking. My thoughts troubled by the one question, how? How? How had he discovered me? Safely, I had avoided all connections with anyone who might have a chance to spy on my work. There was not the least cause for suspicion. An established citizen of the right, well-recommended, pure Aryan, employed as an architect in one of the country's largest munitions plants, certainly there was no reason for him to suspect me, the Gestapo, this Captain von Hind, waiting to take me. Fräulein Keller. Fräulein Keller. Absurd. Oh, of course not. Not she. But could you ever trust a woman? Fräulein Keller. Did I give her any reason? Any reason at all? Good morning, Fräulein. Oh, good morning. My name is Charles Umberstein, and I am to be at the munitions factory near here. I wish to take a room. Oh? One facing the outer street, Fräulein, if you can accommodate me. Oh, I think so. Oh. We have one It is on the second floor, overlooks the street corner. Oh, fine, I'm glad. It, it looks comfortable here, small and comfortable. Oh, yes, you will like it, I'm sure. Uh, I am the owner and manager here. Fräulein. Uh, sign here, please. Yes, of course. There you are. Oh, thank you. Otto! Would you show Herr Umberstein to his room? Yes? Yes, who is it? It's I, Fräulein Keller. Oh, just a moment. Yes, Fräulein? I I have brought you some extra blankets. Oh. You may be cold. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you, Fräulein. And uh, Herr Umberstein, down the street, a little cafe. You may find nice meals and a little music, too. Oh, wonderful. I am indebted to you, Fräulein. Oh, but you are my charge. I look after my guests. It is my job. Oh, that is most kind, Fräulein. Uh, Herr Umberstein, yes. I, I also dine at a little cafe often. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I see you. Here's to you, Fräulein, oh, yes. for your wonderful hospitality. Oh, to you, Herr Umberstein. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fräulein, it's growing late. I must be off. I have a great many things to do tomorrow. Oh, and so do I. Oh, it has been a wonderful evening. Wonderful. Yes, wonderful. Here's your coat. Hi. Right. Growing colder now, isn't it? Oh, yes, the winter will be here soon. Too soon. Yes, but I won't be... Eh? Uh, you won't be? Oh, nothing, Fräulein, nothing. You will be here long. Certainly, Fräulein, certainly. I was just uh, wishing. Uh, wishing? For what? Now I had done it. I would started to thinking. Perhaps she could... For what? Oh, nothing, Fräulein, nothing important. Only the hopes of every man. They become so near sometimes. They're almost reality. So? What else could I do? I had to lead her thoughts away somehow. She took the lead. You 
mean a woman? Yes. Yes, Fräulein, you. Oh, but we have known each other for such a short time. Only two weeks. That's I... true, but I've been aware of you for a longer time, though I've just met you. Oh, oh, Herr Umberstein, I... <sighs> Charles. Oh, Charles. At first I was uneasy about the whole affair. Then after a while I, I did grow rather fond of her. She was so accommodating and we dined together each evening and I, I played my role to the letter. Never once did she mention my work. Oh. Fräulein Keller, what are you doing in my room? Well, I was... I, Anna. I was... You've been looking through my papers. Why? I was looking for something. But what right have you? What are you looking for? I was... Well, I well, was looking for a letter. For? A letter? What letter? One that you haven't got. I thought perhaps you might have it. Now, out with it. A letter from a woman. Very well, Charles. If you must know, I, I suspect you have not been guilty. She I was don't... actually looking for a letter from some woman. Any woman. She didn't trust me. She didn't trust her child. <laughs> <laughs> No. No, it couldn't have been Fräulein Keller. Who then could it have been? I walked over to the window and looked down at the figure who so patiently kept his vigil there. Captain von Heinz, waiting. Why? If there had been something wrong with the passport, but no, that was perfect, not the passport. All passengers will report to the train master for passport examination. Yeah, all in order. All you can take your luggage to Berlin. Yeah, this way. Next. Uh, Next. Here you are. Name? Charles Umberstein. President? Berlin. Nationality? German. Hmm. Mm-hmm. All in order. Picture, luggage. All in order. Thank you, train master. You must be careful, you know. Uh, when may I catch my train for Berlin? It should be by any moment. Next. I stood there in the shadows waiting for my train. I, I examined my passport again as I had done a hundred times before. No one would have any reason to doubt anything so genuine as that. All passengers for Berlin! All passengers for Berlin! Oh, God! Oh, God, must we stand passport inspection again? Uh, yeah. The army intelligence will accommodate you on the train. Yeah, Bull. At three stops, my passport was inspected. A good test. If the passport had been suspected or investigated, it would only prove that I was Charles Umberstein. I had come by the passport through Hans. At the time, Hans was employed as an Austrian customs inspector. This gave him access to many such passports. According to Hans, there had been a person named Charles Umberstein who had suddenly disappeared in 1936... Since there had been no friends or relatives to make an inquest, well, you can see. No. No, I was Charles Umberstein. Why, I even resembled the badly scarred photograph on the identification card. From the front view, he was evidently a large man, big shoulders, large head, wore a short Prussian haircut. Yes, I certainly looked enough like the photograph. Passport was flawless. He couldn't have discovered me through that, this von Hind. Something else. What else? The plans? No, 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 of course not. They couldn't have discovered that. I merely made copies and left the originals. No, 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 not the plans. Why, Hans and I... Hans. Oh, no, no, not Hans. Never. We'd worked so well together. Oh, no, no, not Hans. A strange, silent boy, perhaps, but surely... That night in 1936, when he gave me the passport, he was our man in Austria, but strange things happened even to the most loyal. All set, Charles. Then I will not see you again, Hans. Until? Until I arrive, eh? I will be attached to an army ordnance division in the city. You will receive additional information on the first day of each month. From you? Yes. There's a hotel not far from the factory. Here is the address. Fräulein Keller runs this hotel. Now... On the second floor in one corner sits a mahogany table. On it are a set of silver candlesticks. Four of them. Beneath the candlestick nearest the right. You may find your information on the first day of each month. It will be written in code? Naturally. Be very careful when you pick it up. I see. 
and make no effort to contact me in any other way. And can I leave anything I might learn in the same place? Is it safe? Yes. Now, remember, sooner or later we are bound to be introduced, you and I. My duties with the Ordnance Division will, of course... near and yet so far kind of thing, eh? Yeah, very far. Once inside the city, I'm Oberleutnant Hans Neumann of Army Ordnance, understand? I am Herr Charles Umberstein, architect. Right. Well, time grows short. I must go. Everything checked. Your passport? Perfect. I even resemble the photograph (laughs) from the cards, don't you think so? Yes, not bad. (laughs) Very considerate of Umberstein to have looked this way. Tickets? Right here, through to Berlin. I report to Franz Miller in the munitions factory, produce my credentials. He's been expecting me. I haggle a little about the salary, then I accept. At first opportunity, become acquainted with MD plans. And I will see that you are highly recommended from a reliable source. Just as a matter of curiosity, Hans, who will recommend me? Oh, you needn't worry, Helmberstein. It'll be good, I assure you. Then goodbye, Hans. Oberleutnant Neumann, if you please. Oberleutnant Hans Neumann. Well, then, my Herr Charles Umberstein, auf Wiedersehen. Wie Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Yes, everything Hans had said came about. I picked up my information each month at the little hotel. I left an occasional report for Hans. It was the only way we ever communicated. And then Oberleutnant Hans Neumann began to appear in Franz Müller's office. And eventually Müller introduced us. In fact, Hans was with Müller quite frequently and they dined together regularly. Hans played his part well. But one day, something was worrying him. I will wait here for you, Miller. I'll be with you in a moment. Ah, Herr Umberstein. It's good to see you again. Herr Leutnant Neumann. Herr Miller speaks very highly of your work here. Thank you. Be very careful of this Captain Van Hind. There's something wrong. I don't know what it is. He looks at me very strangely. And there is something I recognize about the man. The eyes are... I've met Umberstein. Yes, yes, yes. We were just chatting a moment. Uh... I've seen Van Hind somewhere before. Be very careful. And don't come with us in case they ask you. Well, well, well. You all ready? Why, yes, of course. Umberstein, uh, would you care to join us oh. at lunch? No, no, thank you. I, I have some work to do. Oh. Always working. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> well, then, let's go, Hans, yeah? Yeah, certainly. Oh, by the way, will Captain Von Hein be joining us today? Oh, Von Hein sends his regrets. Something is delayed. Oh, that's too bad. Von Hein, a remarkable man. No one like him in the service. No one likes you. Goodbye, Leutnant. Von Hein. Such a brief warning. Curt and sinister. Hans was frightened. He would never have taken the chance to speak to me if he had not been frightened. Something that he recognized about Von Hein. Saturday was the first of the month, and there was no information at the hotel. Hans didn't appear again to lunch with Herr Miller... Something was wrong. Something had happened to Hans. Today, I found out. Uh, we will enjoy ourselves today, eh, Umberstein? Yes. We should lunch together more often, you and I. I like good company when I eat. Good food, good company, good digestion, <laughs> Emily. <laughs> this is a wonderful restaurant that we are going to. You know, they serve Norwegian smoked salmon. That is exquisite. And, and, and cheap, too. <laughs> Nothing like these new foods we are getting from Norway. <laughs> I've heard of Norwegian salmon. Uh, and this is the best. <laughs> you and Oberleutnant Neumann dine here often, don't Hans you? Hans Neumann, uh, yeah, we came here often, yeah. Hans Neumann will not come here for a long, long time again, I'm afraid. I, I don't understand. Uh, no, you don't. You remember Captain von Hein? Oh, oh, yes, the Gestapo man who was inspecting our factory a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah, most efficient man. He has apparently been observing Hans Neumann for some time. Oh? Oberleutnant Neumann is being detained by Captain von Hein, no? Was he... He was a spy. A spy? How do you know? <laughs> von Hein arrests only spies. And von Hein never makes a mistake. The man is incredible. Was there something suspicious about Hans? <laughs> There's something suspicious about everyone to von Hein. He himself asked me to cultivate Oberleutnant Neumann 
so that he could better observe his action. Yes, I, I noticed that you two lunch together very often. Uh, we lunch together at this very same restaurant you and I are going to now. That made it easy for von Hein. Easy? Well, to study the man in leisure. Von Hein always wants to be certain of his quarry. And uh, where is Hans now? Who knows? Who knows what happens when Captain von Hein takes a man? Don't you admire such efficiency, Umberstein? Well, of course. Yeah, well, the captain did indicate that there were others to be rounded up, too. Well, here we are. Oh, look, look, you see them in the window? Norwegian salmon. Oh, they are beautiful, so red, so delicious. Are you hungry, Umberstein? What? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, they, they do look delicious. <laughs> Captain von Heint. I looked at him out of the window again. I could see his breath now. It was growing very cold. He was well-dressed in a neatly tailored overcoat and dark hat. It was too dark to tell the exact color. The only thing I was sure of were the hands and the gloves on the hands. Heavy, thick, powerfully mounted prongs encased in a gray, tightly fitting material. Style, lines running across the back. I noticed when he lifted them to light a cigarette. What beautiful weapons. His back was to me. I couldn't help but admire the fine breadth of his shoulders and the thick, closely barbered neck. He stood quietly by the lamppost, smoking, watching his breath and the smoke battle for existence in the icy air. Once when he turned to look up at my window, the single eyeglass he wore caught the reflection of the light. I wondered how much he weighed. Carefully, I retraced each step over again in my mind. I couldn't find the flaw that made me a marked man. The absurdly easy way I had gone through Mueller's office carrying an innocent-looking bundle of blueprints. Then to the vault, the super... the superstition of copies. No one could suspect what I had done. No one had any reason to. Why? Why, then, was I trapped? Of course he was after me waiting down there. I wondered why he didn't come up and wait in my room. Surely he didn't know I was in the room. Perhaps he had searched my room one day while I was out. But what could he find? Nothing, absolutely nothing. A passport proving I was Charles Umberstein. A monogram suitcase bearing the initials C.U. A few letters and old papers. Nothing, nothing at all. I had never talked. I had never known anyone else in service except Hans. Franz Müller was too stupid to suspect anything. Fräulein Keller... No. The passport, perfect. Only one other way. Only one other way could he possibly know. For an instant, the possible answer flashed through my brain. For a full five minutes, I watched him, watched him very discerningly. Could it be? Could it possibly be? The stillness of the street below was broken from time to time by the blare of an occasional horn and the rattle of armored cars carrying soldiers to different parts of the city. Turning from the window, I groped about in the darkness of my room, searching for the automatic I had concealed in the slit compartment of my traveling bag. When I found it, I tested the chamber. Yes, it was loaded. I jammed it in my coat pocket, and putting on my hat, I stood there by the window, watching him... He seemed very ominous, very assured, waiting for me. He must have been getting anxious with his long vigil. I watched him signal to an accomplice across the street, walking back and forth under the streetlight. I noticed something familiar. Very familiar. A bolt from off the bed, tied to a piece of cord attached to the light switch. Ah, near the radiator pipe, room enough to pass it through, the weighted end dragging the string to the lobby below. I picked up my suitcase and stepped out of the door. The hall was dark and quiet. I walked down the stairs. The lobby was empty, deserted. At the bottom of the stairs, I placed the suitcase by the door, and I crossed to the desk. Hastily, I jammed a few bills in an envelope and addressed it to Fräulein Keller. Now, as I picked up my suitcase, I could see him very plainly on the corner... He was only a few feet from the entrance. The 
cord with its weighted end had fallen just short of the door. I stood there quietly. He looked up at my room. I pulled the cord. He was startled when the light went on upstairs, searching the window for a view of the occupant. I walked to the door. As I opened it, he looked at me, looked my way, gazed at me, point blank, seemed surprised. Then, assuring himself, he took a step toward me. Herr Umberstein. Herr Umberstein. Oh, you are... You are Charles Umberstein? Why, yes, I... Uh... Charles Umberstein, who entered Germany in 1936 from Austria? Here's my passport. Your passport, yes. I have always wanted to meet you, Charles Umberstein. I have always wanted to meet you face to face. You know who I am? Why, yes, you... Uh... <laughs> I wonder. You know the others I have had my men pick up. But you, I wanted to attend to personally. It's because you are Charles Umberstein. Now we will uh, just... I'm sorry, oh. my friend. He sat down hard on the curb. He looked up at me, mumbled strangely, then fell over with his head in the gutter. His hat fell off, and I saw that his hair was closely cropped. There were other people on the street. I ran till I was out of breath. The next day, I picked up a Berlin paper on the railroad station. On the second page, I read the headline, Gestapo official murdered. Saturday, January 25th, Captain Charles von Heind, high-ranking official of the Gestapo Intelligence Service, was instantly killed last night by the bullets of an unknown assailant whom he was attempting to arrest on charges of espionage. Captain von Heind had been connected with the Gestapo since 1936. Prior to his affiliation with the Gestapo Intelligence, he had been known by his real name, Charles Umberstein. His entry into such dangerous work made necessary a complete retirement from all public life. The Reich will long honor the memory of Charles Umberstein. I wired flowers from Geneva with a card marked Sympathy, signed C.U. And so closes The Strange Death of Charles Umberstein by E. Jack Newman, starring Vincent Price. Tonight's tale of suspense. Vincent Price will soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, Song of Bernadette. The producer and director of suspense is William Spear. Music was composed by Lucian Marowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. This is the man in black who would like to draw your attention to the new day and time for suspense beginning next week when Cary Grant will be our star. Beginning next week, listeners in the Eastern and Central time zones will hear suspense on Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern wartime and 7 p.m. Central wartime. Listeners in the Mountain and Pacific time zones will be brought their next story of suspense on Monday, December the 6th, and each Monday thereafter at 9 p.m. Pacific wartime. Don't forget suspense on Thursdays, beginning December the 2nd, if you live in Eastern and Central time zones, and Mondays, beginning December the 6th, for listeners in the Mountain and Pacific time zones, with Cary Grant, our opening guest star. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.